Hello folks, welcome to the Market Internal Review for September 11th, 2023. So I'm going to start off here with the SPY analysis. Sitting at a gap up of $2.72 today, um, hard, hard gap up across the New York Stock Exchange. We were sitting roughly around, I believe it was uh, 1500 today, let's see. Yeah, uh, not quite 1600 we did spike up uh, 1700 only about four minutes in. And first thing I noticed, extreme closure, which if you've watched some of these videos, you'll know now that uh, that's uh, almost to be expected in the time we have a large gap up. And just as I had covered in a uh, not, too, not too old video, when we're sitting right around that 1600, and that's where we start the day, there's only two scenarios that really play out uh, from that point, and that is either we're going to have a trending day, or we are probably going to reject quite hard if we've got any kind of, I call it magnetic force <laughs> around us. Um, and today, with this large gap up, we've seen this play out a couple times where the market will gap up huge, ad will be spiked really hard, in this case to the upside, 1600 plus, just over that 1500 line. And they gave it all back, and we did uh, we did come all the way to previous uh, day's high, which would have been Friday, September eighth. And we also did wick the uh, daily gap midpoint here, roughly four four six, uh, almost four four seven. And that happened by ten fifteen. And the other thing, <laughs> almost no tick for that whole dump. And we also had trend balance. So the whole time I'm sitting here watching this, um, I'm watching the Russell. I'll show you that later. And I'm watching some of the other indices. And we had a little bit of a divergence. You can also observe over here on MIT that we're starting to see some, some odd trend isol uh, oscillation on the price and volume. So it makes it for quite a um, quite an interesting trade environment. If you're not fast and depending on the product you're using, you might not be able to actually capture this volatility as they're wicking through the different ranges. So opportunity was definitely around, but uh, again, depending on how you trade, this may have been better to just sit out. And sitting out when you have a trend balance is usually advisable, at least for how I trade couple positive things to note today. By the end of the session, we did close with the gap. Um, we, we close above the gap. So for bullishness, that's a good thing. We also held yesterday or Friday's high price. So the 447. We did fill 50%, quote unquote, fill 50% of this gap. We we had strong buying. No, no lower than that, really. I mean, this this right here, I typically just think of a um, it pulling out anybody that was long from here. This is always typically what happens is we'll make a little bit of a lower low, stop out all the longs here, and then we'll take off. Notice how this long was higher than this one. It's just a typical pattern you'll see. So we did have our, well, my setup <laughs> that I like to look for. And that is a, a break and retest of first standard deviation low after a after a measured move down here. So from the from the peak down to the last anchor point that we did wick, which was this standard deviation high, first standard deviation high from Friday. We wick that down to the cent. Okay, 223. So we come in with our fib tool here. All right, it's always strange alignment too with the TWAP sitting around the 50%. I, I feel like I see that so often, but we get that. And the ad and the VOLD bands on MIT were green most of the day. So comfortable mostly for longs, even though the trend balance, seeing a little bit of something new that I, I've only just started to notice, but I didn't take any position until I, I wanted to see if we could find some full alignment. We did finally hit that right at almost 12 o'clock. 
we get a nice retest and, and break. And the target is effectively the full complete mean reversion up to first standard deviation high. Setting the lows, uh, stop loss below the first standard deviation low or recent low point. So that one was great. This was a, a very good trade. I see this quite often. So the thing I want to point out is we had a tick and uh, mercy divergence today. So that's very interesting. I'm going to start looking and backtesting for those. I see them elsewhere as well, but yeah, this is something interesting. So we ended with 225 ad advancement and extremely bullish volume with no balance or imbalance on trend. Definitely heading towards that bullish 0.5 area that I like to see for trend. So could be potential <laughs> more upside. We've got data release coming out. Looking at the volume. So the accumulation was quite massive. But the after hours print definitely sends us into a little bit stronger territory. Now we're low VIX, so typically for a real strong volume, bullish volume, I'm wanting to see a breakout all the way up here. But I don't know that we'll get that with this kind of low VIX tick accumulation, mostly towards the downside. Most of our breaks, save for this gap up or downside breaks, here's the odd. So we still were over zero. You can see that constant price decline on the on the market there. There's VIX. Not as low as Friday, but almost. Going to go to the New York Composite. We did stay roughly around September's currently monthly TWAP price. And we did test uh, previous months here. This, this will be not quite 16,000. You can see the balance here in the accumulation. Only there towards the end did we start to decline and made a new new low here on the histogram for Russell. So in the morning, <laughs> we had such a, uh, such a sharp rise and then a strong rejection. I mean, this was pretty clearly Russ. We, we come down to this monthly TWAP level, completely V all the way back right to this monthly TWAP level and do it all over again. I mean, this was just a wild day for Russell. Looking at the other indices, we do see the same kind of sharp decline action right out of the gate from the Dow. Not quite of a strong retracement as what Russell saw, but here you'll notice on the Qs. Now the Qs did come down. I, I don't think it was nearly as sharp or, or as clean as Russell was. But uh, the one thing you'll notice is, I mean, once we bottomed out on this monthly TWAP, which... Uh, hilariously is is effectively the mid point of this daily gap can't make this up uh, once once we held that the accumulation was pretty clear where we were going we already saw spy but spy almost in lockstep with cues today I think just uh, a little bit more aggressive in certain areas so Looking at, see, so it's getting a little messy here. I do apologize, but so the past trend bounce that I had predicted for uh, a potential ending down move was the weekly trend, and that would have been 445. So they did kind of quote unquote save it uh, last Thursday. They sent us back up over the 20 SMA at 4449, almost 445. Then Friday, they ended it. After wicking the 10, uh, 10 SMA, they did uh, ultimately kind of come back. If I can uh, hide that little info flag there. They, they did come back below the 50 SMA, which is the top of this cloud here. That being said, today you can see we wicked the 50 SMA after a, a pretty hefty gap. We came down, tested it, tested the 10. We closed over the 10 for the end of the day. So that little line that I drew from last video where I said most of these previous moves uh, you know of recent for the downside were on average about 10 bucks 
for SPY. Okay, about a about a two and a half percent, almost three percent move. That's effectively what we saw here. So, I mean, just that assessment alone. I I spoke in the the one educational video I published where you just have to find a consistent way to measure the markets. This is kind of a a good example of it. Is just go back in time and look at patterns and see if there's something you can use to make an you know an educated guess as to where the market might go. So that was a good uh, trade there. If if uh, you were positioning long towards the end of the day from that, um, that alone I think would have let's see at the highest uh, not quite a four dollar move, but just and just technically two trading trading days. You swing over the weekend, so not too bad. So now that we're here and looking at some of the macro internals for the overall S&P 500 over the five day is still on the incline, so that's that's good. 20 SMA is still not as high, honestly, that I would expect it to be with SPY being decently over its 20 SMA. We're still sitting under 50 there, so still some more work, but still curling up. 100 days still around 50, 200 day roughly the same. I am curious about growth. Or sorry, not growth, the top 100 over over 5. So top 100 over 5, we're well well above 50 now, it's almost 65% and chugging our way through the the highs there. Top 100 of the 20 day. Okay, so the top 100 is probably what is leading this spy I'm not gonna call it rally but reversal I think we can call it a reversal and we're seeing that mainly it's the top 100 stocks because if we go from top 100 S&P over 20 we're we're sitting at almost 60 percent but the 500 at 20 is is only 43 so per the RSI for the whole market here uh, for the S&P market Energy has made a kind of a sharp decline with this reversal. It, I do see that it's often uh, inverted <laughs> to spy. And I know there's some news about oil prices and production. Discretionary is on the rise. Utilities still on the rise. Finance is having a little bit less of a volume lead day today. They're sitting at 28 mil volume, and you can see energy with that decline. We must have seen a lot of <laughs> closures of longs and I don't know, maybe even some shorts there at 22. So a lot of the volume is shifting uh, from finance back into maybe a little bit back into uh, some of the other areas, mainly energy from the looks of it. So where we're going from here, my sites with Q's testing the monthly first standard deviation high, we've got the... Uh, August to September monthly gap right up here at 379. Let me let me make sure that's actually the the last one. Yes. Okay, that is the last one. So the midpoint's 379. I could see us if we have a strong break of monthly first standard deviation, we could go and test that. We'd start to see maybe some kind of reaction around 378. So do watch out for that if you're in the if you're trading the Qs or any tech names, I would definitely keep an eye on that. Like I did say, with SPY holding its previous day's high price, we did hold the gap. We didn't come beyond midpoint. It's not as strong as Qs. We're not hitting, at least per monthly TWAP, we're not hitting that first standard deviation high yet, but it's also <laughs> right around the, the gap low. So I could see us hitting maybe 450 for bullishness and then start to see some resistance. Ultimately the work is is getting past that 451 and change, 451.5, maybe a little bit higher. Um, but yeah, I mean seeing the bullishness in Qs, this is really strong. Now the Dow is already cramming <laughs> up to the the daily gap or uh, the monthly gap midpoint. And we opened up almost at midpoint but not quite. And this is August's TWAP final price at 348. And if you recall, Dow there in the past months had 
or the past month in August was was actually pretty damn strong com- compared to the other indices. There was quite a time where Dow was just ripping and the others were still weak or, or even selling off. So Dow kind of had a weird August. And so now we're coming into September and it seems to be a little bit more in lockstep. But now here today, this is clearly still strong being that it's over Friday's high price, but we couldn't reclaim TWAP. We filled the full gap. We didn't close above it. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they were a little bit stronger than the other uh, indices last month. And now we're crammed right up below this monthly gap. As far as the Russ is concerned, Russ is the weakest of the of the party here, in my opinion. Well below the monthly current September monthly TWAP price. Now in dollar amount, it's 184 and change to 186. That's not a huge move for Russell these days, it seems like. So it could change in a day. But I would have liked to have seen them close over Friday's high price, TWAP, you name it, and maybe be somewhere up here already by now. So we do have to worry about Russ. It's 2,000 stocks. It can definitely move things around. And with all the you know, macroeconomic outlook, Russell's definitely the one that's going to bring that uh, that volatile heat into the intraday uh, price action, in my opinion. All right, I think that pretty much sums it up, folks. I am cautiously bullish until we start to see more of the data release and until I start to see some major fallback on price. I guess if if we start to lose uh, today's low uh, and Friday's low, then I'll, I'll be looking to switch gears because at that point we're rapidly losing monthly structure on the TWAP, monthly TWAP. We're losing first standard deviation low. And then at that point, we've just got all these levels down here that we can come and test. Hope you are enjoying the content. I've received some decent uh, feedback. I really appreciate uh, hearing that folks are um, finding value in the content. Please, if you have any suggestions, something you would like to see, or questions, or otherwise. And as always, thank you for watching, and happy trading.